And how does this go about? Karl Marx discovered a law called the law of capitalist accumulation. It's a big word. But it says that the bigger capital gets, the, more, the less need it has for workers. The bigger it grows. And I just want to give you an example or two. Intel invested <coughs> six or eight billion dollars for a manufacturing process on the West Coast. It created 800 jobs. That's eight million dollars per job to put one worker to work in an Intel factory. Okay, you say, well, that's high tech. Ford spent a billion dollars to add 1,600 jobs to a plant in Kansas City. That's $625,000 per job. Think about what it takes to put 12 million workers back to work at $625,000 per job. They're not going to invest that kind of money. No way. That's, that's the application of the steady growth of capital, the growth of technology, the less and less need for workers, relatively speaking. And that is a law of capitalism. And they have reached a stage where this has now created a system that is so productive, you could see what happens in Ann Taylor's stores, that as soon as they start to produce and invest and so on, the workers are working so fast and so efficiently under the pressure of capitalist technology that they produce so quickly that very soon the system is faced with an overproduction of goods. And then it begins to shut down or, or, or contract or stagnate. So this can't be gotten around. It can't be gotten around. That is what we say when we mean capitalism is reaching a dead end. Marx explained that capital is the biggest problem for capitalism. <laughs> and that's a, an illustration of it. Capital is its own barrier to itself. Every capitalist at the end of the cycle has the goal of producing more than in the previous cycle. The, Every, every level of production every boss meets, the goal is to break through that level next time around. And that's what Wall Street wants to hear. And when they get on the conference calls with the, with the, with the Wall Street bankers and with, uh, with the investors and the advisors every quarter, this is what they must tell them. We're going to increase our profit next quarter. And then the word goes out, and it's OK to invest in that company and so forth, and the stock goes up or whatever. This is the world they live in, and this is the world they've made for us as a class. We have to be whipped by their technology to produce more and more. And then they, have, they wind up shutting down and throwing us out because of what we have created for them. That's the contradiction. That's why I'm saying this may be a non-revolutionary country now, but the seeds of revolution are being planted every day, every time they introduce a new process that throws more workers out or makes them work faster or lowers their wages because their skills have been destroyed by technology, every time they do that, they are marching towards a great social conflict, which ultimately won't be postponable. Because one day, the working class as a class won't be able to go on anymore in the old way. And then will come social upheaval. And that's what we look forward to. That's why we wrote this book and this book, and then why we publish our newspaper, to propagate this idea so that people will see and locate themselves in this crisis, that see, see the motion of it, see where it's going, and, and help to begin to build a kind of organizations that can intervene and take it 
so that we get rid of them once and for all and don't have to do this generation after generation fight back to get back from drowning in their system. That's about it.